everyone, Adam Navis here, and today we're having a real conversation between two native English speakers, myself and Liz Wade. Liz, how are you today? Uh, I'm okay. That's yeah, good. you know, sun shining. Yeah. Sometimes you say, I'm here, and that's a win, <laughs> you know? So, um, well, it's always nice, whatever's going on in our lives, that we can take a few minutes to talk to each other and invite our Spotlight family and friends to come and have a conversation. So today we're going to be talking about the program, The Big Business of Flowers. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, check out that program, I would highly recommend that you do that before watching this. So go do that. You can follow along and listen on YouTube. You can go to our website, www.spotlightenglish.com. Or you can uh, just listen along wherever you get your podcasts. So if you've already done that, stay right here. Keep watching. If you haven't, go do that and then come watch this because we're going to be talking about that program today. Um, this program is all about the, fl the cut flower business. So flowers not that are in the ground and growing, but that have been cut and are used for decoration or to beautify. I don't, Liz, I don't think cut flowers have, have other purposes, do they? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, here in the States, like it's very common to give them for say Valentine's Day mm -hmm. or things like that, you know, like an anniversary to, or, or like a nice thing. Um, yeah. Sometimes or to decorate if for a wedding. If, or if something bad happens, you often send them right. for a, a funeral. Right. Um, right. But I think... But I don't think there's... I think really that's the only purpose for cut flowers. Just yeah. beauty. Yeah. So the interesting thing, one of the interesting things uh, about this program is it talks about uh, the business of cut flowers. So you can understand, I think... I think cut flowers and beautiful flowers are fairly easy to understand, even if you might have different flowers where you live versus where we live. But the business of flowers, that's something that I had never really thought about, taking cut flowers from one location and how do you get them right. to around the world, really, right? Yeah. Because, so, of course, uh, where we live in Michigan, there's winter, what, eight, seven, <laughs> eight months much. of the year. Too much. Uh, the growing season for flowers outside here is very short. Yeah. So so if we want flowers in the winter, we're going to yeah. have to figure out how to get them here. Right. And traditionally, transporting flowers was not something many people, many countries were able to do. But now that we have such a a vast global network of flowers, you can grow various kinds of flowers in places that weren't traditionally known for flowers. So one of the easiest examples that we know of is the Netherlands was known for uh, vast amounts of flowers, but especially tulips, right? Yes, yes. The Netherlands uh, is definitely Holland is known for tulips. That's their, I, I feel like it must be their national flower or something like that. Yeah. But they are the largest um, exporter of cut flowers in the world still. like Really? Th that's what the program says. Oh, I missed that. Yes. So it says... I, uh, I would believe it though. I mean, wouldn't you want some uh, tulips directly from Holland? Yeah. I, I, I have so. actually visited the Netherlands in the past few years, and um, we were there in February, so there weren't actually tulip fields or anything like that, yeah. but um, there were still fresh tulips at like the flower markets and other markets, and also, um, I mean, I've seen pictures of just fields and fields and fields and fields of tulips. Yeah. It really is quite amazing, the, the flower markets there. I've seen little videos of how efficiently they're able to cut the flowers, package them, and, and ship them. But of course, yeah. it raises the issue now, uh, this, this program raises the issue of uh, there are certain countries around the world that are saying, oh, we actually have a great climate in which to grow flowers, yeah. and we can start to grow these flowers and ship them around the world. 
and there is some uh, that that of course is fine, but there are some issues with that, right? Who owns right. the flowers? And these are issues of of production and fairness and labor, because you can make you can grow flowers and labor costs might be cheaper in a developing country or. Um, there might not be standards of protection uh, for workers. Right. Uh, so it, it raises a, an interesting question in my brain about how do you invest in a place that needs uh, jobs and money, but also do it in a way that doesn't take advantage of workers. Right. And that's where the uh, fair trade idea comes in. Yes. Right? So let's talk about fair trade. So yep. when, when we say fair trade, what do, what do we mean by fair trade? Um, well, uh, okay, so I will be honest. I am not, a, uh, I'm not an economic expert. Sure. My understanding of fair trade. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I have to reorient my life now. <laughs> I know. This is a huge surprise to you, but um, no, but really, basically, it's paying workers a fair price and giving them a good work environment. So not not um, sending people in yeah. to work in places where they're going to inhale toxic fumes right. or work with uh, chemicals that aren't safe or, yeah. or things like that. And then on top of that are going to be paid, uh, paid fairly for their work. So not, right. um, not unfair wages, but something that is going to make them able to live their life and have a good life. Right. And that's, that's an issue actually that in a country like the United States, we're actually struggling with as well, because there are people who own big companies who have mm -hmm. vast amounts of profit and extra money, whereas people here are like struggling to get by, right? There are yeah. there are things in, in all kinds of countries. And that's where the idea of uh, we don't have the t time or the expertise yeah. to talk about capitalism and profit and and some of the motivating factors of that, but also the the problems with that. But, yeah, this this conversation is getting deep. Well, this is <laughs> one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately yeah. is how people yeah. like uh, simple simplicity, right? They want to know what's good and what's bad. And I think one of the things that we at Spotlight strive to do is is inject a little complexity and say. Right. This is a, this is a program about cut flowers, the business of cut flowers, but it's more complex than that. There's right. uh, the cost of transporting the flowers. There's the cost of labor, and we don't mm -hmm. want to offer just a simple solution. We want to say, you know what, this the world is a complex place, and right. there are a lot of a lot of things involved in these these decisions. So yeah. I I, and I, it's I not it's not always easy to get answers to those decisions, right? Like if you want to ask, did this flower or this bouquet, which is a group of flowers, did this bouquet come from uh, people who were treated fairly? Or is this from a company that that did yeah. not, you know, did not use those measures or something like that? Well, and there's companies who kind of make sure they have a big stamp or a sticker that says, oh, we're good because they know that's what people want, but there are ways of yeah. not, not really doing not that in exactly your heart. Not exactly following those not rules. Not exactly following those rules. Um, so I think uh, I am not a flower person and I'm probably not going to worry too much about uh, where I get my flowers because I don't buy a lot of flowers, but there are things I think in my life I will probably um, think about maybe more yeah. often, especially now um, when we're recording this, the global supply chain is still um, affected by COVID and yep. will probably for the foreseeable few years continue. And there are things that, that we were used to being able to get relatively cheaply whenever we wanted. And now we have to think, hey, how did this, how did this get here? Should I be buying it? Um, when should I be buying it in season right. or out of season? I don't know if you've had any experiences like that when, when you're shopping. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't really get flowers to bring this, to bring that back to flowers. Um, you know, I kind of 
get what's there. I try to yeah. shop local as much as I can um, for our food uh, and, and vegetables and things like that. Um, I mean, obviously, the the global supply chain is is impacting everyone. I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Um, but to bring it back to flowers. Um, Okay, so here is here is like a not super serious question, Adam. Feel uh, free to take it not wife... super serious. What? <laughs> Feel free what? to take it less serious than I've been. <laughs> I know. We just need a little levity, a little yes. uh, lightening up. Yes. Um But uh do you buy flowers for your wife? Does uh, she like on them? occasion, yes. On occasion I do. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> uh see, uh I will say one of the things about me is that I do not like cut flowers. Really? And um, I mean, they're beautiful. Um, but I would prefer if my husband is going to buy me, uh, buy me flowers, I would prefer a plant. Huh. Because okay, I feel go on. like, like cut flowers, they are beautiful, but then they die. Okay. And then... And then it's hard to get rid of them. Why? Oh, I don't know. They just kind of like get yucky in the vase. and That's exactly the beauty of cut flowers. They get so yucky that you're like, I have to get rid of these. <laughs> oh, I would much rather have like a plant that flowers. Okay. I'll tell you, I have a Christmas cactus okay. that um, I, and I am very, very bad with plants. I, I try really hard. But I have a Christmas cactus that bloomed right as COVID was uh, shutting down the United States. Yeah. And it was such a bright spot, hmm. actually, for me to walk into my kitchen and see one beautiful, big pink flower on this plant. Yeah. So, and I will say, sometimes I do buy cut flowers. I, I do enjoy them. Well, I, th uh, I think this yeah. is a great question to ask our audience. Potted plants versus cut flowers. So I'm going to represent cut flowers because there are certain things like roses and tulips and certain flowers that, that you true. can't grow in a pot. You can't have, you can't have a rose plant in no. your kitchen. No, it grows. As I'll, a, it... I'll bet that some person somewhere is like, I have a rose plant right in my kitchen and it's beautiful. Yeah. But. That's not that's not everyone's case. Well, so tell us if you like cut flowers or potted plants, but don't just write it. This is I would love to see a picture of your oh, if you have yeah. a favorite potted plant or cut flowers or even if you have a market like a flower market near you, you got to admit yes. walking you would love walking through a cut a flower market. Yes, flowers do smell beautiful. I mean, the smell I do love walking through like where flowers are and yeah. smelling them. It is yeah. there's nothing like that. Yeah. It's so light and and wonderful. All right. Well, yeah. Post a picture in the comments below or let us know if you like a certain kind of flower or if you're like Liz, you have a, it, it adds a burden of you have to decide when do you throw <laughs> them out. Um, I would also be curious to uh, to know if you do get flowers, where do you get them? Like, are you influenced by if a company or, you know, this is like, this is like, where you get your flowers? Do you know that they are fair trade flowers? Do you care about that? Do you get them locally? Like, does that go into your thought process at yeah. all? And I, you can do that in the comments on YouTube. You can do it on our website, or you can do it on social media. We're on Facebook or Twitter. Um, we're basically Instagram. wherever wherever you want to uh, post that picture or tag us or or however. Because yeah. I think it, I, I would love a moment of of everybody just sharing a nice picture of flowers. It seems it seems like a small thing, but like Liz was saying with her potted her uh, Christmas cactus, it's a great way to just brighten everybody's mood, even yeah. in a digital, even in a picture. Yeah. Um, and one more thing, we're going to ask you to like and subscribe if you're not already. If you're if you're on YouTube and you're watching this video, it really helps us out. Check out the join, uh, what we're offering there. Super excited there. And make sure to join us uh, next time for our real conversation. And until then, we hope you listen, watch, practice, and learn.
Spotlight out.